All right, guys, section 6.2. Um, as we've discussed before, if we're trying to find the area bounded by a curve between 2x intercepts or 2x uh, values or endpoints and above the x-axis, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. We can do this with rectangles. Uh, in fact, you can do this actually with any geometric shape. It just gets significantly harder um, when you start approaching other geometric shapes. So you could use circles if you wanted to with different radii. So you could have one big circle in the middle. Oops. You know, something like that. And then fill in the, the remainder of the space with smaller circles. But the, the issue then becomes how many circles do you need? What does the radius of each needs to be? Um, and, and this is actually a, a, an entire branch of mathematics called packing problems. Um, and, and you can imagine that if you have, for instance, this is the floor of a room, what kind of tiles would pack this or space? Uh, they're also called space filling problems. Uh, how much packing material would you need to cover the entirety of the floor? Now you can say, well, just take a sheet and then sort of cut it exactly the shape. But what happens if you have square tiles or Maybe you have uh, rhomboid tiles, or maybe you have triangular tiles. So how is it that you can uh, pack all the tiles in so that there's no space left over? Or how can you fill in the space so that there's no space left over? And it's the same exact idea here. We, uh, for the purposes of the AP exam, are just going to be restricted to Riemann sums and, or sorry, to rectangles and trapezoids. Those are the only two that are tested for us on the AP calculus AB exam. BC does cover Simpson's rule and a couple of other things, but uh, more for that when you actually take BC. So here, when we're using uh, rectangles to approximate the area under a curve, th there's two decisions that have to be made. Number one, how many subintervals or subdivisions do you want? So that's basically how many equidistant spaces do you want to split this region into? So here I have one, two, three, four. Um, as you can imagine, the more subdivisions you have, the better estimate you're going to, to get. But keep in mind that the more subdivisions you have, you also have to do significantly more computations to get there. And secondly, the, the other thing that you have to determine is how exactly is the height of the rectangle being determined? Is it being determined by the left endpoint? Or is it being determined by the right endpoint? So both of those are either going to give you an under approximation, in some cases it might be an over approximation, but that, that's a choice that you have to make. That's a design choice that you have to make. Uh, you might even do midpoints, which sort of is somewhat mitigates the, the issue with left and right endpoints, uh, but it's not always going to be better. So let's look at a couple of examples right away. Uh, the theory doesn't really get tested so much, but computationally these problems are tested quite frequently on the test. So here we wanted to use uh, left Riemann sum or left endpoints with one subinterval. So you, you really just have one rectangle to approximate the area between the curve V of t equals one half or 0 0.5 t squared plus one, uh, the x-axis and t equals zero to t equals two. My recommendation is always just graph it if you can. So we know that it'll be a t squared, so it'll be a parabola. Uh, 0 0.5 times t squared will sort of make it broader. Uh, it opens it up. And then plus one will move it up by one. So it doesn't have to be a perfectly precise image. It's more just you're trying to get a feel for what exactly it is that you're finding. From zero to two, so let's say this is two and this is zero. So you're trying to find this area, and if you use left Riemann sum, that means you have to use the left endpoint to determine the rectangle, or to determine the height of the rectangle. So in this case, this is actually quite simple. The height of the rectangle is one because, well, this number is one, well, that's the y-intercept. And then the way, the width or the base is two. So in this case, the area will just be two. Uh, nothing too complicated, I hope. Um, same problem, uh, we want left endpoints or left Riemann sums, and this time around we want two equal subintervals. So in this case, we have the same image. Uh, 
this is still 1, and this function is still x squared, uh, 0 0.5 x squared plus 1. So now we have to make two rectangles, which means the, uh, the width of each rectangle is going to be 1. Uh, with numbers going from 0 to 2, two subdivisions, it's pretty obvious. But here's how you find it always. The width is always going to be given by this formula, b minus a over n. b is the upper bound, so in this case it would be 2, minus a is the lower bound, which is 0, over the number of subdivisions, which is 2. So 2 minus 0 is 2, 2 over 2 is 1. That's how we're getting that the subdivisions are 1 apart. Um, okay. Now, if we were to use the left endpoints, I would need to know what the height of the rectangle is at that location, but we know from the picture that it's 1. So the overall area, let's start building it, would be width, which is 1, times the height, which is also 1. Plus, now we're looking at the next rectangle. So here I'm going up to there and then moving across. I'm using the height given by the left endpoint of the x values. So in order to find what the y value is there, I need to find what f, or not f, but v of 1 is. v of 1 would be 0 0.5 times 1 squared plus 1, which is 0 0.5 plus 1, which is 1.5. So here we had width, here we had height. So I'm going to multiply the width by the height. And this will give us 1 plus 1.5, which is 2.5. So with this, you can figure out that, and, and hopefully this makes sense that this is an under approximation because this region is not accounted for. It's an undercount of the area. Uh, please keep in mind that this is an increasing function. So review of a lot of the details we already talked about. This is an increasing function, and we're using left endpoints or left Riemann sums. So this is giving us an under approximation. My recommendation personally would be to not memorize that. Draw a picture, draw some rectangles, and as long as you know that you know if it's a left endpoint, then you draw it from the left side. If it's a right endpoint, you draw it from the right side. You don't have to memorize this. It takes five seconds to draw a picture, and you don't have to potentially get it wrong because you got it mixed up on a test. So fight the urge to memorize these statements that, oh, if it's an increasing function, then it's going to be an underestimate. If it's a right estimate or left estimate, don't do that. Just uh, see it for what it is. Don't memorize the, the shapes, but just know that you can draw the pictures very quickly. And even one subdivision or two subdivisions will give you the answer. You don't have to do like 17 subdivisions to get an idea for what, what exactly you're doing here. All right. So in this case, same function, but write Riemann sums with two subintervals. So I guess we'll just keep this color. So I'm going to use the width again from the previous example, which was 1. And now I'm using the right endpoint. So I have to use the height at this endpoint in order to determine what the height of the rectangle will be. So this is my first rectangle. And then I have to use the height at this endpoint to determine what the second rectangle's height would be. Now, the height at x equals 1, or t equals 1, we already figured out. v of t, v of 1 rather, was 2.5. We did that right here. Oh, 1.5. And now we need to figure out what v of 2 is. So v of 2 would be... 0 0.5 times 2 squared plus 1. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 half is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So we know that this height is 1.5, and we know that this height is 3. And at this stage, we can just find the area. The area will be uh, width times height. So 1 times 1.5, that's the height of the first rectangle, plus 1 times 3. So that's simply 4.5. So that would be the area of the region using right Riemann sums. I have to run out of time on this video, so I'll see you guys in the next one.